I want to talk to you about today. And I think this is going to help a lot of traders out. I think so. I think this is going to be really, really helpful for you. So I really want you to pay very close attention to this session. And um, I strongly encourage you to take some notes. And uh, if you can, maybe rewatch it, I would say, at some point in the future, just to make sure you've gotten everything down. Now, before I delve into charts themselves, I want to conceptually go over the concept that I want to share with you today. The RBI, which stands for Red Bar Ignored, and of course, it's, it's, it's opposite, which is the GBI, Green Bar Ignored. Now, I've always told you that the RBI and GBI is, first of all, it's a small bar event. And you should have all of your events um, broadly categorized in two groups, big bar events and small bar events. So elephants bars and tail bars and 180s those are all of your big bar events and then you have small bar events like um you have rbis gbis you have acorns you have narrow range bar events uh, so acorns are smaller than narrow range bars they're really tiny but small bar events have their place because they help us minimize risk they help us also pick up reliability. So it's rare when you can get lower risk and higher reliability. And that's what we get with small bars. They lower the risk and they raise the probability. All right. And the reason why small bars work, so the reason why small bars are so highly reliable is because of this, guys. I've taught you this over and over again that markets go wide and then narrow and from narrow they go wide again and right back to narrow all right so the narrow uh, the narrow is what represents the small bar period of any move okay so when you get something like this all right when you get a narrow state and your stock originates something powerful from a narrow state, the reliability of follow-through is very high. Why? Because the expansion from a narrow state is just starting. A higher probability that this is the start of something because it's the start of expansion from something narrow. If you have the same event happen here that's probably closer to the end because you are further away from the original narrow state all right and you've been expanding for a while and you're further expanding so this is the start of expansion this is likely the end of expansion because your expansion started here. I want to take, does this make sense? Where narrow states are your most explosive. All right, makes sense so far, right? Okay, good. Narrow states are your most explosive. All right, up or down. Let's take this concept and go micro with it. Let's take the narrow state to wide state concept that's the macro version of it. Let's go micro with it. So check this out. Expansion and back to narrow. And expansion. Again. So this is nothing more than the micro version of narrow expansion back to narrow expansion again so you could have maybe let's say you started here so this part is narrow narrow here's your expansion 
Here's your expansion. Here's your narrow again. Here's your narrow again. And there's your expansion. And there's your expansion. Tell me you understand this. You've got the macro to the right, the micro to the left. You see this? Okay. So what are these? What do I, what animal do I call these? These are whales. The RBI is nothing more than a micro whale. It's this up, down, and boom. That's all it is. You're looking at three versions of the same animal. Now, I'm going to take you really micro on this. Let's go to the micro of the micro. All right. All right. We have space here. Expansion. Drop. Narrow. So what's that, guys? You see the green up and then the pull back from the high, leaving behind a little tail. You see that? You got that? But wait a minute. The bar is not finished. Check this out. Zoom. Did you see that? It's the narrow is hiding my intra bar. Same bar. So now you've got one, two, three. You've got four versions of the same animal taking place from micro, micro to micro to macro to super macro. All right. So here's the smallest. Here's the second smallest. Here's a third, and here would be the macro, the really macro. Now, all of these, I want you to understand this concept when I, when I, I want to delve into this one, this version here, number two. But now that you, I wanted to give you a deeper view of number two so that you understand that it's just setting, that this sets up the same thing I've always taught you to play, which is the first pullback. You buy the first pullback. You buy the first dip after strength. You got strength. Here's your first pullback. And you, this is buyable. All right. But you determine, guys, look, you determine when that's buyable. You determine when this is buyable by the quality of this. The quality of the surge is what determines if the next red is viable. If the quality of the surge is there, if the surge is solid, if it's near perfect, then the next red is more likely to be viable red, not freak out red. And based on what I've taught you on the RBI, this is one of your cards. Your buy is above the high of the red. Boom. Here's your buy. One of the benefits of playing the RBI and the GBI in reverse is, well, there are several benefits. You, you have a right to put the stop under the opposite color. So red is the opposite color. There's your stop. So they're typically low risk if you take that stop. You don't have to put it there. You can opt for the larger stop, which is under the surge. Because in reality, this whole thing is the event that you're playing. 
you need all three pieces. You need the original, the initial surge. You need the pause red, and you need the 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 execution bar. But so that's the whole event. So you're not technically wrong by putting your stop under the whole event. What I'm saying is that there is an option. There is a small risk option with this play to put it under the red. And it, you don't have to do it exclusively. Sometimes you can put it under the whole thing. Sometimes you can put it under the red. This is one of those rare scenarios where the trader has a choice and you can't be wrong. It's just a choice. You can't be wrong. It's just a preference. Like your color. Okay, do you follow what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm putting down so far? You got it? All right, good. So, when is the RBI best applied? Well, we know we should you should know if you've been here for any decent period of time, you should know that it is an excellent add opportunity so if you are already in a play that gives you an rbi it's an excellent ad let's let's go over that option so you here's your narrow state out of a narrow state you have you have exploded into a nice elephant bar which you have bought into all right that's a different topic, but boom. So you're in this for two lots. Your stop is somewhere down here. Then you get this. And boom. Excellent add point. And you can have a separate stop for that one. So your stop is on one lot here. And your stop here is the two lots. Okay, so it's an excellent ad. Take a note for that. I want you to, I want you to remember that. The RBI and the GBI, all right, is an excellent ad event. It is also an excellent opportunity for a missed event. Write that down. It's an excellent opportunity for a missed event. You miss the elephant. You miss the, the dual tail bars. You miss the initial event. How do you jump on board? Wait for an RBI. Wait for a lower risk entry because you missed the ideal entry write that down great ad event great missed opportunity event i missed the first event i'm getting in on the first rbi okay anytime you're buying above something it's confirmation entry so you're buying above the red yes this is a confirmation entry event all right okay good and you have the last type, which is really what I've done. Ev I've, I've laid, I've, I've, la I've put down the foundation to get to this point that I want you, I want this part that we're going to cover now to take you to the next level with this. All right. And that is the third way you can use this so you know it's a great ad event it's a great missed opportunity event and it's a great i don't know what i'm going to call this but let me just map it out for you it's great for when you have this it's a downward movement this is one scenario and you get this now there are indications you get that this might be the bottom of that move. This might be the last of the hurrah on the downside. But what's the problem with buying this? What's the problem? Somebody tell me what the problem is 
of buying this. You think it might be the bottom, but what's the problem? You're fighting power to the left. No, Simon, it's to the left, not the right. That's your other right. It's power to your other right, Simon. Yes, it's you're fighting power to the left. That green has a lot of red to get through. But if you want to give it a shot, you don't give it a shot on the elephant. Give it a shot on the RBI. Ah, aha. That's where you give it a shot. And that's your risk. Aha. You guys have missed these bottoms like that because you you know that fighting power to the left is not what you should be doing and you've seen these things rock away from you right haven't you experienced that no i don't believe you no nah, you've never seen that before nah nah of course you have all right this is the way if you're going to fight power, you say, but Oliver, I've got three fingers spread. I'm wide apart. It's on major support. That, 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 that. Whatever is leading you to this could be the bottom, but I've got so much power to the left. Take the RBI. That's the way to do it. All right. That's scenario number one. This is the proper way to fight power to the left if you really want the trade. All right, that's number one. I've got two more to cover with you, two more. All right. How do you fight overhead resistance the same way? Let's cover that one. You have a 200 here. Your stock has moved up. Oh. And let's say it is pulled back. And now it's done something like this. And you're like, this thing looks like it's going to go. I've already crashed into the 200. And that's already weakened the 200. Oliver says that once the 200's been weakened or crashed into at least once, the second one might go, but it's still resistance. Grab the RBI. You're highly likely to get this because it's resistance. Grab the RBI and do it in low risk style. Yes, you can take. This is what I'm saying. If you're going to take, if something is in the way, and the best, that's the best way to look at it. If something is in the way, if something is potentially going to halt your play, but it may not, and you want to give it a shot, then do it with an RBI. It is literally the lowest risk way we can do something. A tail is also an RBI. How can a tail be an RBI? All right, an RBI is a small bar event. A tail bar is a big bar event. So, no, you can't have a tail. You can't have a tail bar be an RBI. Um, the body of a tail bar can be, but this is getting into a completely different thing. You don't want big tails on this, this bar. It's, it changes the whole dynamic, okay? All right? So have you seen, has the 200 ever stopped you from, from catching an explosive run? I don't believe you. Of course it has. Okay. So this is one way to try it. Now, notice how I drew this event. Notice how I drew this scenario. This scenario is igniting in nature because of this pullback. I wouldn't necessarily do it here. Do you understand? Uh, because let's say you're too far away from the beginning. But this is starting over again because of the stock has reset itself. So it's igniting in nature. I like this setup better. Third one is... So let me just map these out first. Let me map these out first. So you got... So you're going to play if you really want to take this. You're going to play the RBI uh -oh, there. 
if you've got other things that really suggest this could be your bottom. That's how you fight power to the left. If you've got the overhead 200, you're going to fight. And you've got something fighting you above. I like this scenario the best. And that's something like that. And notice your buy is right under. That's how you fight. So that's fighting power to the left, fighting power above you. Do it with an RBI. And the third one is if it's elevated, you for some reason still think that there is some to go. This is the only way to play it. You've really left the station already. You understand? You left the station already. But you just think there's another leg here. And if you do want to give it a shot, this is the only way to give it a shot. The only way. So let me go to charts. Betty, let me see if I can explain. Let me see if I can show that to you, why you might consider these. And let's go to charts and let's take a look at these three. I just want you to understand the three. So one is fighting power to the left. One is fighting power above you. And one is taking an extended move. Okay. Or measured move. Yes. That's right. All right. Let's go. This is Bitcoin. It's a one hour chart. It doesn't. The time frame doesn't matter. But do you see this? That's like right by the 200. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the reason why I like this one and not this one is because this is the igniting bar into it, and this one's not. You understand? This is the igniting bar. So you're off from the igniting bar. That's why I drew it that way. I like it when it's kind of like the stock that the item has reset, and you got the igniting then the pause right under something. If you want to give that a shot, your risk is little. Betty was saying, well, I'll, Oliver, when would you take it if it's extended in this scenario? Because of the igniting, I'm not catching the igniting, but when the igniting is extra powerful, you're likely to get more upside, even though you're coming into it a little later. So what's the most powerful igniting that you know? Betty, surge off the 200 clearing. So if you get something like my form, remember the formula? So it's E, boom. You get something like that, elephant bar plus clearing off the 200, but you missed it. I'd be, a, it'll, you know, whether this worked or not is besides the point. It's like, the more powerful your igniting event, the higher up it's okay to get in if you missed it or even to add to it. All right. Fighting power to the right. I mean, to the left. I'm, 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 I'm doing what Simon did now, my other right. It's fighting power to the left. It's your fault, Simon. Now, what are some of the signs you might be like, I may have the bottom. Maybe there's a prior low down here like that. Maybe this is a unique time as well. Maybe the 200s there. I don't know. I'm just saying that if you feel like you've got a potential bottom, but there's so much red to fight to the left, but there are reasons that suggest this might be the bottom. Wait for the RBI. And I can hear some traders now. But Oliver, what if there's no RBI? Well, then I guess you miss it and that's life. Right? <laughs> but Oliver, you know, so wait for the RBI if it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Life's not perfect. What can I tell you? That's right. 
Vittorio, not no RBI, not your money, not your move, not your opportunity. Stop being greedy. <laughs> but Oliver. All right. So we've got these two scenarios here. How you fight resistance, how you fight power to the left. Um, this concept of I want you to be really careful with the 200 overhead resistance scenario because remember how I drew this? I want, I prefer to only do this if it's the second attempt or the third attempt, right? I won't do it on the first attempt because, well, first of all, you shouldn't be doing it on the first attempt because the first attempt has to start well below it to be a significant attempt anyway. So you're catching it too late. You're not catching it too late there. So see how this is not the first attempt. It's the second one. Even down here, you get a crack at the 200. And then here's your GBI right there. And boom, you go through it. Do you guys see that one? You see that? And to give you greater clarity, I always tell you you can remove the tails. If you're not playing the tail, get the tails out of the way so you can at least mentally understand what you're dealing with a little bit better. And so you've got this 200 support. It cracks and weakens the 200, right? comes up to 20 period moving average resistance, drops, gives you the GBI, but you're right below the 200, right above the 200, but you've weakened the 200. The odds now that this goes are higher. Boom. And there's it on the opposite side. So this concept, and remember how I explained this, this concept to you, right? The wrecking ball concept. So when a wrecking ball wants to bring down an abandoned building, the ball, here's the building. The ball will swing and hit the side of the building to weaken the foundation first. It's usually not the first contact that sends the building down. The first contact weakens the building at the foundation and then the second swing does real damage because the building's in a weakened state. Same thing here. Wrecking ball comes into the side of the building. Boom! Weakens the building, weakens the foundation, making the second swing a lot easier to do real damage and get through. All right? So just remember that because I don't want you just now starting to ignore things like resistance and power to the left and all of that stuff um, without doing it intelligently. Remember, every single thing has an exception, right? Usually not going to buy something right at or near a flat 200, but there's an exception to it. All right, if you had that wrecking ball already weak in the 200, maybe. You don't buy things with a lot of red to the left, but, you know, if it's low risk enough and that green, that initial green off the low is powerful enough, and you get that RBI low risk entry, you can give it a shot. As long as you've got a lot of distance above you, a lot of space above you, right? And then... Uh, so, if you wanted to try this here, you got a lot of red to the left there, but the only way to really do it is to get something low risk there if you really want to try it. You're like, well, you know, I do have this 200 zone underneath me. So, these things that I tell you are low odds or you shouldn't really do very frequently. 
everything has an exception. Everything. It just needs to be the intelligent exception. Does NPR fit in here? Not really, because these are the exceptions to NPR, right? This is taking you to the next level. Guys, I always have a reluctance when it comes to these things. Whenever it comes to something that is an exception or something that sort of breaks a rule that I have pounded the table on for so long, I always have this hesitation because I know there are people, first of all, I have many people at different levels. So some of you, you're here. Type the number one if you're here for the first time ever. Type the number one if this is your first poker trading club session. Type the number one for me. All right, I don't know if there are any number ones going off. Uh, yeah, see, we got first ones. Goo goo gaga. Babies. He's just a baby. He's just so, so cute. This my ba these are our babies. Let me pinch your cheek. Let me pinch your cheeks. Okay. So we've got babies here. They're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, they haven't had enough time to get the rule in place to even think about breaking it later. <laughs> so that is a challenge I deal with. Another challenge I deal with. Orlando, okay, awesome. Another challenge, uh, you just got a bigger diaper, Orlando. That's all. Your diaper's bigger. You still have a diaper. Um, the The other challenge I deal with is that I know some traders are going to take it too far. Um, but, you know, I can't let those things stop me from revealing these higher level nuances for the traders that will get it right, you know. So I'm leaving this as a warning for you. Don't take this too far. I would start off just monitoring it. The way you do that is try to find these three scenarios I explained to you. Try to find RBIs right under or right above the 200 that go through. Try to find scenarios where you're buying, fighting red, a lot of red to the left and vice versa. All right. And uh, find these extended RBIs, but the igniting event was so powerful. Like, just tr start off finding them in the past. That's how you can start off anything. Find it in the past. Just these were found in the past. This is the past here. And then take note of them when, they're, when you find feel that one is happening live, but before you start taking it, just start taking notes of the ones that seem to happen live with you. Because once you get good at finding something in the past, you will start to see it in your live life. Hasn't that ever happened to you? Guys, has someone ever mentioned to you, like, have you seen this new car that just came out or the new Tesla, whatever? You're like, no, I've never seen it. And then all of a sudden, it's all over the freaking place. Like, what? the heck happened? I never saw this thing before. My friend mentions it to me. Now I see it every few minutes, right? Because your awareness is being opened up by you being made aware of it. So when you start studying it in the past, it will start showing up in your life. That's a life hack, by the way, guys. All right? You want something to show up in your present life? Study it in the past. I promise you, it's going to start popping up all over the place. You want money to start you want money to start revealing itself in your present study money in the past. I promise you, it'll start showing up all over the place. It's just a life hack.
Trading is a microcosmic version of life, right? You want war? Start studying war. You'll get war. <laughs> it's a universal law. Can you take, can you go up in size? You can do anything you want to, Derek, as long as you're not going to violate maximum loss per trade, right? But guys, um, please take, take, take a pause when we have these sessions to try to grasp how priceless it is. A single session like this can really have profound effects on your trading for the rest of your life. Think about that. The rest of your trading life. If you're going to do, like I decided that I'm just going to trade for the rest of my life. I hope that the day I kick the can, that I will have placed a trade. That's just the way I would love to go out, you know. But um, this is what you've decided. Then this can have such a profound effect on your entire trading life. One thing, one se session, one nuance like this, but you've got to make it yours. So it's not just, you can't drop the session here and just leave it as if it's going to magically germinate. You've got to work with it. You've got to look for it in the past. You've got to take some images and save them. You've got to mark some charts up. you got to watch them happen a lot. Make it yours. It is, you can't cheat the system. you got to put some work into it to make it yours, but please do that. And, uh, be on your way. All right, guys, I love you to death. We're back at the trading game tomorrow. Awesome. Ciao for now. Boom.